Training Series Part 6. In this segment, we're going to be discussing various methods for approaching toilet training. Now, there really are endless possibilities when it comes to how do I help my child become toilet trained, but we're just going to discuss a few that I personally recommend and you'll decide if there's something here that you feel like you'd like to work with. So the first method, and I'm saying that with quotation marks, it, because it's not really a method, but the first approach to toilet training is actually, I don't train my child at all, but I wait for my child to become trained. Now, the reason why I mentioned this first is because I think it's very comforting to parents and it really reduces the pressure a lot when I realize that there are millions of children around the world who have become trained without any intervention on the part of the parent. This means that what happens is biologically, physiologically, there is a process that goes on within the child that pushes them toward becoming trained regardless of whether or not I personally do something to train them as the parent. So that takes a lot of the pressure off, doesn't it? Now, it may be that that is not going to work for you for a number of reasons. Sometimes we have a schooling issue where a child reaches a certain age and we'd like to put them in a certain school setting and we think that um, or we, we were told that they cannot be in the school without being trained. So sometimes there are outside factors that kind of take away the possibility of us just waiting. Another reason why we wouldn't want to wait is sometimes what happens is for a child to do something, they have to get over a certain hump sometimes. And let's just say that it might be in the best interest of the child for me to make this happen because, as I said in segment four, we do want a child to feel that they're independent and that they can do things between the ages of two and five. That's, the whole, that's what the whole stage is about, getting autonomous. So sometimes a parent might feel, you know what, this is going to be really good for my child to get to the point where they realize, hey, I can do this, and so sometimes they do need a little bit of a push to get there. So I might decide that, no, I'm not going to wait for any one of a number of reasons. But I want you to know that yes, it actually is a possibility out there. Method number two. So this method really works well with a child that has well, we can call it a stubborn streak, or we can say a child who's very strong-willed. Now, I think we all know that there are people who seem to more go with the flow type of personality, and then there are those where when you tell them sit, they will stand. And when you tell them stand, they will sit. So, for those types of children, what can work really well is where we actually don't approach it as a training process because we want this to come from them which will be really powerful and generally kids in this category when they want to and the will is there ooh, nothing is going to stop them so here's what we do i'll actually explain it by way of illustrating how i did this with one of my children so i bought a package of underwear. And I bought a package of underwear that I thought, this was for a daughter, and I thought that she would like this kind. I didn't take her with me though, and I'll explain why. What I did with it was, I didn't have a discussion about it, I didn't say, would you like it, I didn't talk about it at all. Remember, this is a child that when you say something, they do the opposite. So what I did was, I put the package in her drawer. I just left it there without saying a word. And eventually, she found it. I also wasn't, when I did this, it was before I felt any pressure that she must be trained. So I did this knowing that she'll find it eventually and when she finds it, we'll see what happens. Now she did find it and she said, what's this? So I said, oh, that, that's underwear. Underwear? 
Is it mine? Well, it's not yours yet, but when you become toilet trained, it will be. Hmm. She thought about this. I didn't say anything else. Okay. The main point here is I did not continue the discussion from my side. I didn't say, would you like to be? I didn't ask for any questions about it. We just put it back in the drawer. Now, it was a few days later, probably. It could have even been a couple of weeks later. I don't remember exactly, because again, I wasn't pressured for time. But I do know that one day, not long after, she said to me, no more diaper. So I said, what do you mean? She said, I want underwear. So I said, hmm, okay. Well, actually, in order to get underwear, you have to make in the toilet for one full day. She said, okay, that's what I have to do. Fine, right? She wanted it. She was ready to do whatever it was. Now, I really don't even remember her having any accidents. We took off the diaper. I told her she wasn't going to get the underwear until she demonstrated that full day that she was able to go to the bathroom. She did it. She got her underwear the next day and she was happy. And so was I. So that's method number two. We don't talk about it, but we put an incentive there and we're very quiet about it. And we really wait. Gotta wait for the child to pick up the cue and run with it. Okay, so those are the first two methods that I can recommend. Tune into part seven where we discuss the next two methods.